Okay, let's go for the next one. Oh, we got mascots on the side. completely. It's a very dark and dangerous place. Watch out. That's what we get for doing like kind of hundred percent, but like I guess in every category then. So I don't think something that very much interests me. Sacrificing my time and just searching for every chest in the game. Oh, procs are dangerous creatures. Power attack didn't work on them? Okay, well. <laughs> Hmm, but I really wanted to get a chest. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, they don't like, you know, follow me. They just like kind of moving obstacle. Okay. What's this? Oh, it seemed like something doing. God damn, by accident. Okay, well that was risky. <laughs> What's happening here? Okay. Wasn't that the platform that the guy was spinning on? Oh, close! Holy hell, what's happening there in the distance? Hmm, I think they're just susceptible for jump attack, that's it. At least it seems like it. Yeah, okay. I think that's a van, yeah. <laughs> I'm still currently trying to call at least Ven or Aiki, but yeah. I can't double jump. Okay. I'm still confused. Is an actual enemy or not? Then. <laughs> How to land this? Oh my god. Oh, what the a uh, platform of jumping? <laughs> This saw is pretty fast. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Was it something there? Yeah, I didn't even see. I didn't see this enemy. <laughs> it's interesting that we can jump on things that does nothing, like there's no chest or whatever. We can think about 
using the environment to your advantage, just like in this level bridge, you could jump on the ropes. Could be your solution to progress in the level, not necessarily jumping on planks. This is like a pretty much more specific jump. You have to go back and then jump. It's hard to explain, but some things you just have to know how it works, especially with jumping mechanics in platformers. Yeah, see? Van just chilling. Aki, whatever. <laughs> it's a very good touch that when we are airborne, we have this circle where we will actually land. <laughs> That's so handy. Oh my god, I could see that coming. I mean, I can cross it normally. Oh shit. Wait, what is this snake doing here? Hello? Oh. Adventure? Okay. I can see some objects moving quickly in your direction. They're birds with torpedoes attached to them by Nelson. I'm activating deafening grenades. Stand your ground. Hmm. Okay. That's new. Ha ha ha. Oh shit. Birds with <laughs> torpedoes. Oh damn, that's like a long distance. Ay, 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 ay. Maybe let's just run around. Yeah, I think that's gonna be more convenient solution. It's essentially the same situation with this snake boss. We just could run around and that's it. Which I guess is fair. That's your solution to the gameplay? Sure, whatever that works. Oh, we're fine here, thank god. But this level, see? The hell it's long. Oh shit, no no, don't like make me fall now. That would be terrible. Oh, okay, nice. Back to the usual schedule. Now to think of it, like is it really that mandatory now? Because we know that we're not gonna do 100% in this game. Is it that mandatory to just collect everything even though we don't really get anything from it? I would understand if we would have some kind of upgrade system. For example, we could just buy things for the currency of those hieroglyphics. Because essentially hieroglyphics are like the currency, I guess, here. For gathering lives and stuff. We could do something like triple jump, or maybe like different pattern of combos, or just something more complex than we get from the tutorial. That is just fun in platformers, because then you give a meaning to collecting things, not only like, you know, some cosmetics like this mascot in the ship. What is this jump up here? And since we still have time before the quest release, I definitely could see 
some improvements in mechanics. Just make it exciting. It's not like it's dull or like boring because the scenery the visuals make up for it. But I think the core gameplay could be more complex or just interesting, that's it. Because we were stuck with the same things from the first stage. Yeah, this is very tricky here, Jesus. Oh wait, there's the van. <laughs> Aching. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just gonna call them van. I don't care. Well, damn me. See, this is not an enemy, <laughs> this is just a cosmetic. There's barely any difference from the enemy and Aki having different animation. Oh wow, wait, <laughs> this spike was tricky. Oh, it has like split parts, okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's gonna be the end. Oh my god, no. Final checkpoint. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> Stupid frog. Oh my god, <laughs> now those frogs don't move. Wait, they move? Something with the pattern is pretty weird. There are definitely some things that stop or like the interaction just don't start when crossing some point. Because definitely I can tell that there are certain points on the map when you cross, something like starts to happen. I'm not a developer, but I could see just from the gameplay standpoint. Like here, for example, we we're airborne, we we're not on the platform. So there are just small things that are noticeable, definitely. So how do we... Okay, I know how. And then we do... Yeah. Fast souls. Thank God for checkpoint then. Hell no. Not you here. Oh wow, definitely a case of jumping before the animation even starts. Yeah, here we go. If nobody does anything, the entire planet will be drilled through and cut to pieces. You can't let it happen. The next location will let you see where all those mined resources goes and how they are used to make Nelson's forces stronger. <laughs> One just missing. <laughs> Screw me. But an Aki, so. Hell yeah. We didn't get anything for maxing out the Aki's though. Just for the chest in one level. Hm, interesting.